A few days ago, I went to a big metal festival with two friends of mine. And I don't like metal. I'll talk a bit about my experience, but mostly today I want to talk about metal album illustrations. This, in my mind, is a whole genre by itself. And I have to say, I hate it. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. Before I get into the drawing and chatting about metal, I want to remind you that you can write any sort of questions in the comments. About art, other things, I just want some questions to make a Q&A video. If you don't ask anything, I'll write the questions myself and it won't be as interesting to you, so yeah, write something down there. As I start sketching, let's talk about this drawing and then I'll get a bit more into the music, the festival experience and give you my tips to survive it. You might have noticed that I'm drawing this in Procreate on iPad. If you want to see a review of what it's like, check out this video link in top corner. Drawing on the iPad for this project was a good choice, because on my XP pen I have to restrain myself from rotating and zooming too much for the video capture, in order to not make you feel nauseous. On iPad, however, every stroke is captured as an image and put together automatically so you don't see the movement. In turn, you lose the option of seeing my layers and my many Ctrl Zs. Just so you know, this image contained 19,914 strokes, drawn over 5 hours and 22 minutes. I want to draw the most basic metal album cover. Here's what it needs and what I don't like about the style. It needs a violent imagery. It can be monsters, gore, weapons. The more violent, the better. Here, I opted to draw a woman with half a brain exposed, crying tears of blood and holding a skeleton on her lap. The woman is nude because it needs to be shocking and she's holding a wooden cross like a puppet master controlling the skeleton's hand. The skeleton, by the way, has too many ribs, but that's okay, it doesn't need to make sense. This illustration is full of icons and symbolism because the woman can be seen as a zombie but also a necromancer. She's also covered with thorns, as is the entire illustration. All of this symbolic imagery doesn't mean anything to me, it's just something you might see on a metal album cover. Notice the extremely foreshortened hand holding the cross? That is also something you see a lot, unnecessary foreshortening. Having a young and pretty woman in the mix of the violent scene is also something I chose, but I could have gone with an old decrepit witch too if I wanted. That's for what I'm representing here. For the style, unnecessary details are a must. I will shade with hatching everything that can be shaded and even more. You need to see every detail of every bone and every thorn with extreme clarity. The more crowded the drawing feels, the better it is. As for colors, everything dark and saturated will do. If I can mix together colors that wouldn't blend well, I'll do it. I mean, seriously, look at these album covers. Who decided to color it like that? Basically, this is why I hate this sort of illustrations. Of course, not all of them are like this. The style varies a lot, and for example, this album by the French band Alceste is honestly really pretty. The detailed art is nice, there's no unnecessary violence, and it has no color. You know what? Actually, I like that illustration so much, I won't use colors in mine. Just black and white. I'm definitely not lazy or out of time for colors. Finally, something that needs to be done is to include the name of the band in the design, in the most convoluted way possible, to the point you can't really read it. Here, I'm doing it with thorns. Since it might be hard to follow every bit of tiny hatching in the process, I'll write where to look at in the corner over there. While I keep on drawing, let's chat about metal music. I am not a metalhead, like at all. I come from an indie rock background, alt rock, psychedelic and prog rock. Of course I still like to listen to a lot of genres, and I do mean a lot. I really enjoy blues, rhythm and blues, rock and roll. I'm a really big fan of jazz, I listen to pop rock, rap, reggae, ska, dub, lo-fi, electro as well. I told you, I like everything, except metal. Hard rock is my limit. But I have two friends that are big metal enthusiasts, and they wanted to go to a big music festival in the west of France, the Motoculture Festival. They invited me and then convinced me. So here we are, last weekend, in a car driving for 10 hours to get to the other side of the country to camp at a metal festival that I paid 120 euros to go to along with 40,000 people. Now, if you've never gone camping to a music festival with friends, here are my tips for the best experience possible. First, have a tent. That sounds obvious, but a good tent is really good. Have one that has a longer flap going down at the front so that you can leave stuff outside the tent discreetly without having it get wet with morning dew. I'm talking about smelly shoes, for example. 
Don't forget your sleeping bag, inflatable pillow, mattress and such. Second big point, have your bathroom stuff with you. Toothbrush, toothpaste, but also soap, shampoo, towel and toilet paper. If you don't bring toilet paper, you're basically dead. In order to go shower in the flimsy plastic cubicles that inevitably await you, bring a pair of light shoes or flip-flops. Trust me, going to shower with festival boots is a bad idea because you'll likely have to stand on them while you dress to avoid walking on the filthy, dirty ground. Which brings me to my third point, clothing. You need a black shirt. If it has a metal band on it, it's better, but something dark is needed or you will stick out like a sore thumb in the crowd. Have a sweater, a rain cape, jeans and boots. Jeans are the best festival pants because they're unkillable, even though you might ruin them. Boots are a must, especially for a metal music festival. If you're the rowdy kind, you might end up in the pit in front of the scene and without boots you won't survive even 30 seconds of pogo. For those of you who don't know, a pogo is when people in the pit fight each other. Well, not fight, but rather they shove each other very violently, but playfully. Variants exist, like the wall of death, when the entire crowd splits and then the two halves come crashing together in the middle following the breakdown of the song. Another fun variant is the circle bit, which is a circular pogo. Everybody runs in a circle and push each other. Pogos are really fun, but there is a risk of being trampled. Fortunately, despite all the violent imagery, shirts, leather jackets, tattooed with blood, crows, bones or even hate messages, the metalheads are a really nice bunch and will carefully look after you. Every time somebody in the pits fall down because they were pushed hard or they slipped, all the people around will stop and help them get up, protect them from others. No matter if the metalheads look like vikings, bears, skinheads, necromancers or ghouls, they care for the community. That's one of the biggest contradictions in metal. It prones sacrificing a virgin goat on a pentagram to invoke the devil holds from hell, but they are really all about inclusion, freedom of speech, fun and music. Last point of stuff to have with you, and the most important I think, is earplugs. Even the most badass viking looking dudes have earplugs. Even the tattoo covered with dozens of piercings have earplugs. A human is not made for enduring 100 plus decibels for hours. You will suffer a hearing loss if you don't bring good earplugs. They are also really useful to go to sleep without hearing the drunk dudes continuing the night right next to your tent. You can keep the plugs with you at all times in a fanny pack on your shoulder, along with your phone, a water bottle, your rain gear, etc. That is the most efficient way to enjoy your festival and the music. And that brings the sort of essay to its last part, the music itself. I'll tell you again, I'm not a big fan of metal. And yet, seeing bands performing live, I still enjoyed most of the three days festival. If you know a bit about metal, here's a list of some of the bands I saw perform. Apocalyptica, Testament, Powerwolf, Creator, Behemoth, Perturbator, Rivers of Nihil, Cult of Luna, Igor, Le Proust, Paul Bearer, Tesseract, Suffocation, Alcest, Cattle Decapitation, Tear, and many others. As you can see, the band names, much like the album covers, tend to be violent and honestly a bit cringy for my taste. Suffocation, really? But in any case, most of it was fun. Some I really enjoyed, like Alcest and Le Proust, which are black atmospheric metal and progressive metal respectively. Igor is electronic metal, aka breakcore, which I enjoyed. Powerwolf, Testament and Creator, for me, resemble the most classical metal, like power metal, heavy metal or thrash metal. Stuff like Suffocation, Belphegor or Cattle Decapitation, brutal death metal and the likes, with horrid guttural screaming, I didn't really enjoy. It had the best pogos, I'll admit, but it was really hard for me to find the melodic aspect of constant slamming of the double pedal on the drums and the heavily distorted guitars to the point you can't even discern when it switches chord. During this metal festival weekend, I did end up somewhat enjoying metal. Not to the point I'll start listening to it on my own, but now I do have more patience when my friends are choosing the music in the car. If I end up listening to one band on my own, that will definitely be Alcest. Finally, as I wrap up this drawing, I want to thank and apologize to the metalheads watching this for a few reasons. First, thank you for being better humans that your image tends to show, and including neophytes like me. I'm sorry for not understanding your genre naming convention at all, since any random violent sending word will make a new metal genre. Lastly, sorry that your visual tastes are so bad. I wanted to honor that bad taste with this drawing, this fake album cover, but I couldn't even do it. I had to make it somewhat pretty. I also didn't feel like coloring it because it looks sick like that. 
I also forgot to draw the strings of the puppet thing, but oh well, that can also be seen as a cross or something, it doesn't matter. I hope you, the viewer, enjoyed this drawing and this little essay about metal. If you want to stick around, I upload two drawing videos per week, which is a good reason to subscribe. Leave a like and a comment, asking me questions or telling me what you want to see me draw next. Check out my social media and I'll see you in a few days. I'm Detroit and my favorite metal is actually brass. Bye! Thank you.